Well, welcome to my channel. I know it's Riding Mower King, but I work on all types of lawn equipment, and where I'm at in Pennsylvania this time of year, it's snowblower season. So, we're working on this single stage Simplicity snowblower. It's a model 520, which means it should be five horsepower, 20 inches wide. Now, if you stay till the end of the video, we're going to do a little trick that I like to do on these single stage snowblowers with the auger to get a little bit more life out of them, especially if you're in the middle of winter and you really need to get done and you don't have time to go get new rubber for the auger. There's a little trick on some of them that you can do, and this is one of them. And uh, it needs the pull rope repaired. You know, the rope is broke. He said, if you have the covers off, see if you can fix that. But he's not that worried because this has electric start. So the first thing I like to do when I'm checking out something like this is actually make it start. Make sure that the engine actually works. Because if the engine doesn't work, then that's usually the biggest problem. So it has electric start. I plugged it in before I hit record. And the starter spins, but it doesn't turn the engine over. So I don't know if it's worn out teeth, but I think the, I think the gear is just not coming up. So I'm going to have to take the covers off and check out the electric start. If that's not too hard to fix, I think it's just stuck. Then I'll fix that and we'll see if it actually runs, see if the, the paddles go around. And then we'll worry about replacing the rope. You know, if the rest of it, if it's worth putting a rope on, then we'll, we'll eventually put a rope on it. But then we're going to have to check out the carburetor. You know, if it starts, eventually I'll put some gas in it, see how it runs on the carburetor on its own. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get this working without having to put too much into it. Now that's the only two screws I saw on this bottom cover. It's kind of loose. There's a couple screws up here in the top that probably attach it to the orange top cover. So we'll have to get those out now. All right, let's see if we can speed this up a little bit. I figured this was going to be a challenge because it goes around the handle here. So it may be designed that all the service is done through the top cover. So it, it snaps in there. Now we'll take this cotter pin out, slide the handle out here. Well, it's full of gas. I hope it's good gas. I really hope it's good gas. Well, we heard something fall there, and that was the shaft for the chute. For the chute control. Well, I can get to the carburetor. can get to the starter. You can get to everything up here, pretty much. So that's good. Yeah, the starter's pretty rusty here. So I'm going to I'm going to bet that that's the problem. It just can't move. So here we can see starters all rusty. This shaft right here. That's going to be like uh and that that's going to be the biggest problem. That, that that gear has to slide when you when you hit the button, that shaft spins and the inertia pulls that gear in. And that's what lets it engage with the flywheel. And down here we can see the drive belt. And let's try the tensioner here. Well, that works. The belt gets tight. We'll do a quicker, uh, a more thorough inspection of that belt if we get it started here. One thing that's real important on these two cycle snowblowers, and I have this happen a lot, is this throttle plate gets stuck because the gas will get gummed up in there you know, this has oil and it mixed in the gas and it gets gummy 
and uh, it's spring-loaded open when it's just sitting when you know when it's not doing anything it's it's spring-loaded open and uh, if the gas gets gummy it it's, gets stuck open and you could put gas in it and maybe you get it started that it runs through the carburetor but it runs at wide open throttle so you have to make sure that this can turn see that's wide open that's idle that's all the way down so you, you want to make sure that this is free that it don't stick before you even try to start it um, otherwise it's going to run really really fast and you may not notice it right away but the engine it, it does not like that it's not made to run that way so that's something you always want to make sure you, you know sometimes you can reach in from the bottom but you always want to make sure that that can move free otherwise it's going to lead to problems so we're going to spray this shaft with some pb blaster and i'll probably have to get a, a hammer and a punch and see if i can get that to move so this here is the gear we have to get loose this has to slide There's three mounting bolts for that bracket and it doesn't look like it's that easy to get to. So we'll try a little bit more at getting that loose before I take the starter off. Starting to move. All right, I got it broke loose. Now let's see if we can get that gear off. Cause I'm thinking something is stripped out there. So here's the clip I got off. Now we'll get these parts off here. So there's the friction part. We'll leave the spring on there for now. these should have teeth ah there we go it's the washer at the outside that has the teeth on it there's little teeth in there engaged with the with the, the shaft for some reason I was th thinking it was this but it's not it's actually this this was still stuck so we're gonna wire brush that a little bit this has to go in this pulls in engages with the with the gear with this rubber you know that's threaded there spiral so when that spins it's supposed to pull this in and then the flood the the gear goes in all the way and the force of this makes it turn because the starter makes this turn it's engaged with the teeth so we're going to clean that and since i have it off we'll wire brush that shaft and then it should work Now this should be able to thread right on there. 
and it gets a little hung up there. See, this needs to be able to spin all the way on there like that. I'm, I'm actually going to put a little bit of grease on it. If you have a small wire brush on a rotary tool, that would be great for right here. Because that, that spiral still has a little bit of rust on it yet. Well, let's try this. We'll make that the rotary. Well, that looks better. Cleaned it up pretty good. Now yeah, that spins on there nice. All the way off the other end. Now I gotta hold it to get it off. There we go. That's much better. So now this should just slide in and out real easy. Yep. Then we put on the rubber piece. Well, we're gonna. these two on the rubber and the drive washer now we'll push them in then we'll put this plastic washer on here because it don't want to slide in any farther and I really should have got a pair of pliers for this this clip down on there all right so now the starter should be in working condition because we have our our drive washer here that's splined onto the shaft then we got the rubber for friction then we have the gear and this washer is going to push everything in when I hit the go button. And the engine is going to crank over. I doubt it's going to start, but it should turn over. Well, now it works. The engine actually turns over. And I have the choke on and I have the key on. So let's just see. Because there is gas in it. So there we can see it actually runs it, it runs good nice and smooth it wasn't surging or anything like that and the auger engaged so this could potentially be an easy fix which would be good because we need to try to keep the price down 
So we could, actually we could call this done right now, but we're gonna look at that drive belt because we have most of the cover off already. So now we're gonna look at this drive belt and it's just a ribbed belt like on a car almost. And from what I can see, it actually looks pretty good. Of course, it doesn't want to turn. This here is the tensioner. That seems all right. The easiest way might be just to crank the engine to get the belt to go around. So we want to look at any damage on the belt. Yeah, the belt's got a little bit of wear, but we're going to let it go. We're going to lube up this shaft, though. We're going to spray a little WD-40 in there. Uh, not the shaft, this cable. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely got water in it. And it started to rust a little bit. So we're going we're gonna to lube up that cable real good. We don't want that breaking. We don't want it getting stuck. Because if it's dirty like that, it's just extra resistance that doesn't need to be there. That's all it is. Let's uh, start by putting some down the cable at the top. It would be real nice to spray it in the top here and have it come all the way out the bottom. It would be nice to spray it in the top of the housing here and have it come out the bottom, but that's, uh, can only get so much in here at one time. So we're going to try and spray it up from underneath without getting it on the belt. We spray it like that it'll be downhill it should should run down in the housing and it is and we'll put a little bit on the on the cable on the actual wire there and we'll work it back and forth a little bit there starting to move a lot easier now it didn't necessarily move hard before but there was extra friction and eventually that'll just eat up the cable and it'll break then your auger won't spin It's not bad, but it's really noisy. Now, you won't hear any of that noise when it's running, but all those sounds are friction. And any friction with something like that with a tensioner that moves, all that friction is more resistance. And it, more resistance is just something you don't need. So we'll lube the pivot a little bit there. And all of these guys all squeak. Anytime you got metal against metal, it just makes it squeak. Just like the, the handle up here at the top. So we'll put a little squirt on there. And a little bit in there. A little bit over here. And now it's getting pretty quiet.
I hear a little bit of friction. I think it's inside the housing here. And there's not a whole lot we can do about that. I could take that whole housing, the cable housing off and soak it in oil overnight. And then it would be all lubricated inside there. But we're not going to go overboard. So there, now it's a lot better. It would be nice to fix the recoil. I see three screws up top. Maybe that's all it takes. I may need to move the gas tank yet. All right, there's the third screw. And they're nice and small. Easy to lose. Now, get the cover off. Just like that. And there it is. Oh, wow, the rope is in there. That's perfect. And the little wings come out. There you can see the little wings come out. So it should just be a matter of rewinding the spring and getting the string to come out. That'll make it a little more interesting. We're going to get this rope out of here. And we're going to run it up through this hole. Or try to. With it being frayed, it's going to be a little tricky. We're going to get it to go back out this hole here. Just like that. That's going to be enough tension to pull, this, pull the handle back in. Now let's see what it looks like at the end. Yeah, from what I can see, it still looks good. Now, the reason we're checking right here, this is where the stress point is when the rope is out all the way. Stress point is right here and at the handle. So we want to make sure that it's not about to break right there, which it's not. So we got that. Put the screwdriver in there to hold that like that so it doesn't rewind. Not that it matters that much. And that way we can thread this back through here. Or try to. It's kind of like pushing a chain. I know, cut the end of it off. Well, we may end up doing that. Eh, we got a little bit there. There we go. So now we got that. And it sure looks like it's made to go up here. Like you would it would like it would come up from down there, go through this, and then go over here. But I am not gonna do that because if that was made for the actual handle, there'd be a rubber, a plastic grommet. Otherwise you're just gonna tear up the rope. So that may be that you hang the handle on there, you know, something like that. But I'm not going to run it through there. So now we're going to thread this back up through here. And then we tie a knot in it. Now there's a special way that they tie these knots. And uh, this video is not about knot tying. That actually really does look like the right knot. So that's what we're going to go with. So now we got that. And we let the recoil go back in. And it goes back on like this. So now that we did that, we should be able to start it with the rope. So let's turn the key back on. Hit the primer a little bit which we almost shouldn't need. Then we'll pull the rope. Okay. 
So there we go. She actually runs. But we are going to check the spark plug. Because since it burns oil, it might be fouled a little bit. So we're going to see. See if I can get it off with this socket. Yep, not all that tight. Yeah, it's a little black. Auto light 255. It actually looks pretty good, except for it's a little black. But otherwise, it actually looks pretty good. So we're just going to spray it with a carb cleaner and wire brush it. So now it's like a whole different spark plug. So it was already not in bad shape. It was just a little, a little carboned up from being a two cycle. So now this is the part of the video that everybody's been waiting for. Now on these single stage snow blowers, this piece in the center here is what really throws the snow out the top. The sides here, they pull the snow blower along, they, they rub the ground, they help pull it along, and they work the snow into the center, in, into this part here. So this here is a wear area. The, these wear down, and this has wear on it, but it still, it still contacts the ground underneath, and uh, it, it can be wore down pretty good. It's still gonna pull snow in. If you have three or four inches, it's gonna pull it in. But what really makes these not work very well, when this centerpiece gets worn down, that it doesn't contact back here. Well, it, it needs to be real close to this. It doesn't actually need to contact it, but it needs to be really close. So as, as these wear down, it keeps going too far. As these wear down, it gets further away back here. The further away it gets, the more the snow just falls back behind it. So, what we can do is, th this is actually two-sided, and this side is a little bit shorter than over here. So, we're going to take this off, and we're going to rotate it so that this edge here, that really is new and has no wear on it, is up here at the top, at, at the outside. You know, and, and I don't know if it picks it up on camera, but this is a little bit shorter from here to here than it is from here to here. So, we're going to flip them around. And it's going to be a little bit closer and it's going to work a little bit better. And that's how you get a little bit more life out of it before you have to replace the parts. Or, you know, you're out blowing snow and it's just not throwing it like you think it should. It, you know, if you look at that and, you know, this side's a little shorter than the inside. You could take on this model here, on this style, which a lot of MTDs had this. You know, I know it's simplicity and this is all metric here too. Uh, you know, the ones that have this separate piece, the, you can buy these, you can buy this and you can buy these, but these, these are bolted on here. These guys here, they're all riveted on. So you got to drill them and put new screws in, but we're going to flip these around and it's going to be a little bit better. There is actually washers in here and they they're so embedded they just stayed in there now to get them back in i had to pull them out 
and they don't want to go back in right just because of the, the overlap with the other rubber it's not that they don't fit it's just a, a tight fit bit of help here from a screwdriver of course it keeps spinning because when you're going backwards it takes all the tension off the belt so you would still have this situation here even if they were new just because of the interference fit. And just like that, it, it is actually a little bit closer. Get this camera in here and maybe we can see. There we go. It's going to be really, really hard to tell here. But here I can get my finger into there, that far. And on this one, my finger stops right there. That's all the farther my finger's going in. So back on this one, I can get pretty good amount behind there. And then on this one, I could definitely feel it's closer. So it's gonna give us a little bit but a little bit is gonna make all the difference when you're out there blowing snow. You know, I've done this before. I'm sure I'm not the only one that knows this little trick, but uh, you know, it definitely, it definitely works good. It makes a big difference when you're out there trying to blow snow. Because I've, over the years, I've had people that looked at these and, you know, oh yeah, those things don't blow snow at all. They, they don't work any, at all. And then, you know, somebody else I talk to, they say, yeah, my neighbor has one of them. He throws that snow so far. You know, he uses that thing every year. It works really good. Well, the difference is one has good rubber on it, on the auger, and the other one, the rubber's worn out. All right, this rotation of the chute has some resistance that I don't like. So we're gonna spray this a little bit. Everything's all enclosed on this thing. Let's try a little bit more in here. That's better. Now 
That's definitely better. So we'll get that part lubed up a little bit here. So now we gotta get those two tabs to line up. But first, we put this rod through here. And we get the gas cap out of the way again. There we go. Now we're getting it together. The orange goes inside the gray. Now it's together. And we got our little tabs engaged down here. Put our gas cap back on here. And the chute control, we take the pin back out, drop it down in here. I think it's gotta come out just a little bit here. There we go. Now we got that. Got our handle coming out right there. Now we put some more screws in, two little guys. I'll give it one more pull here. Put the choke on. So what happened there? All right, so we got it running, and now we test it a little bit. We can actually put load on this one because of the auger drive, and uh, seems like maybe we got to go in the carburetor a little bit because you put a load on it, and it just slows down, and it, it definitely should not do that. So we're going to have to, we're going to drop the bowl and uh, see what the carburetor looks like. Maybe the jet's clogged a little bit, the main jet maybe, that it's just not getting enough gas. All right, so we're going to take the bowl off and see what we see what we find in here. It would have been nice to know about this situation before we put it all back together. But I can get to the carburetor pretty good here, so hopefully I don't have to take any other covers off to get to this. Well, it's definitely dirty here. See if we can get this off and maybe save the gasket. Oh, yeah, we got some water in there. I don't know if it'll 
pick this up on the camera. But we definitely got a couple different There you can see, it's got a little bit of water in there. It's got a couple different liquids going on in there. So that's gonna definitely cut down on the power. All right, so I'm gonna clean out this jet with a little uh, pipe cleaner for a, a torch tip cleaner is what I'm gonna use. We got our idle circuit there and our main jet circuit down there and the main jet right there. So we're going to see, see if that makes any difference. So I'm done cleaning the carburetor. It was really just the main jet was a little bit clogged. The idle circuit was fine. And the rest of the carburetor didn't really look too bad. It had a little bit of water in the bowl. But uh, so we're ready to try this out again. So it's going to start up and I'm going to engage the auger. And it's going to be hitting the floor. So you're going to hear that. But... You also should hear that the engine doesn't slow down. And when I let go, the, the engine should be running still at full speed instead of having to, to speed back up from being slowed down. So there you can hear that when the auger is engaged and dragging on the floor, the, the speed of it doesn't change. It, it keeps going fast. And when I let go, the engine's still running at full speed. So I'm going to call this one finished. So we got the electric start working that was rusted fast. We got the pull start working. I just had to put the handle back on the rope. And uh, we checked the belt. The belt's okay. We tuned up the auger a little bit, so it's going to throw snow better than it did the last time it was used. And uh, it didn't really take any parts. It just needed to be serviced a little bit. And uh, it's going to go back to the customer, and everybody's going to be happy. And it wasn't really a big project. So, if, you know, if videos like this are of interest to you, you know, hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out a lot. And uh, we're going to work on this other snowblower next. So you'll want to hit subscribe so you can see what a big snowblower hap you know what happens with a, a full size snowblower two stage. Hopefully that one will be easy too. So we'll see you at the next video. Thank you.